Hello guys and welcome back to the second part of this billboard tutorial. My name is Justin and in this part we will be finishing up our scene. We will be adding some materials along with some, some textures, setting up a render and then bringing it all in a Photoshop and finish it off. Now since time is an issue in, uh, in these tutorials I actually went ahead uh, when I uh, first did this and I already assigned the materials and and textures and everything and it's it's ready for uh, for render now maybe some of you would like to to watch this process but from my point of view it's it's actually pretty boring since uh, it's nothing very very complicated so I'm just gonna show you exactly what I did because uh, Starting to do it from scratch will probably take uh, a lot of time because uh, materials take tweaking and so on and so forth. And obviously, I can't uh, know by heart the the settings. So uh, before we start to go into the shader tree, I want to say that uh, I went and modified the lights that we created in the first part. It's nothing uh, complicated. Just I separated the top part here. Let me switch to Goosh Tone Shading. Maybe... Nah. Uh, so I, I, I separated this part that you see here, just selected it and then Control X and Control V. And then I went ahead and selected the edge, uh, was probably this one, and I just extended it uh, a few times to create this uh, this inner piece and then I took the middle polygon and I copied it and um, extruded it to make the light and I did this for all three lights uh, since we have them instance it's already on this side okay so <coughs> uh, that's basically it for the modeling uh, I, I did just that modification uh, next thing that you need to do is you need to head over to cgtextures.com and you need to grab this texture. It's called Metal Plates Dirty Zero One. You you'll finally uh, you'll find it under Metal Plates and then the Metal Base. They're both tileable, so it's okay. And another thing that I did was I went to uh, Airco site. It's a uh, it's a site that provides uh, provides IES files, and I got this light. It, I think they they you can download a pack or something. I can't really uh, remember. Um, it's you need to search for this number so two 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 zero six, and uh, you will get the light. Now we're gonna need this these for uh, for the lighting purpose. Of, of of the scene and the textures uh, we're only gonna use two textures in the scene so I went and assigned the materials as follows so the glass is obviously the glass from the lights and it's not a very complicated shader it has zero diffuse pretty decent uh, amount of reflection uh, some Fresnel uh, transparent amount to 95% and refractive index to 1.575. I didn't mess with the absorption distance since uh, the geometry doesn't have any thickness whatsoever. So that's about it for the material. Next, what I did is I didn't want this to impact my scene too much, so I went ahead and moved the whole uh, material node above the base shader and I added its own shader. Uh, in case you don't know how to do that, uh, it's pretty easy. You just go to Add Layer, Special Shader, and you just drag it in here. And the shader, I, I set it to Not Cast Shadow, Not, not re Receives Shadows, and Not Be Visible to Indirect Rays. So it's basically just sitting there as a glass object. Okay, let's go to the next material, and the next material is obviously the add. Let me just select all the meshes so you can see them. So the add is nothing complicated again. It just has zero diffuse, 
uh, zero everything. It only has 1.5 luminous color. But um, I have the billboard add that we created, which is added as a luminous color. But as I was saying, uh, this doesn't really matter anymore since in while I was uh, doing some post work on this image, I found out that the 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 shader this shader wasn't wasn't looking as I wanted it to look, and I actually did some pretty heavy uh, modifications. So I, I can uh, I can just tell you the settings that I used and show you how I did it but in post work we will do something different so uh, the the color is the luminous color is the billboard add image and I gamma corrected it because uh, it influences the color okay and it, it's using a UV map uh, for the add that I created now I can't remember if I did this into the first part but I'm gonna show you how to do it so you just select the polygon that that's involved and I'm, you use a, a project from view so you just go to either uh, front or back it doesn't really matter but it kinda matters since uh, the image might be flipped if you're going into the wrong viewport and you just click and it will project it here and then all you have to do is uh, fit UVs and uncheck keep proportion that way the polygon will occupy all of the UV space. Okay, and the next thing, let me just go in here, it's faster. The next, oh, and for, since I decided to modify it, I'll, I, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I obviously needed an alpha channel to uh, look to, so I duplicated my alpha output and I dragged it into the add material I renamed it to add alpha and by doing this the the render outputs an alpha channel for the selected material alone so you can uh, do this if you want to isolate certain materials excuse me okay next we have the lights base which is uh, the the base of the lights and it's very very uh, simple it has that that metal base it's set to box here and the lights uh, the the light materials settings you can see here just a little bit of reflection with a bit of Fresnel I also have blurry reflections on with uh, roughness not so high and make sure conserve energy is checked on and also uh, you need to pay attention to the diffuse amount since uh, it can affect your scene. I wanted I wanted the the main focus of the scene to be the add and not the surrounding geometry. But uh, of course you need a bit of detail in that part also. Um, so it has the the diffuse color that metal base mapped as a box. Of course it's gamma corrected since we're using a final color output gamma of 2.2. And then I just duplicated it and set it to buff. Next is the support, which is the big, the two big pillars. Again, nothing fancy, just uh, basically the same textures as the lights base. Uh, just that I needed a different material because I wanted to modify the material settings. I don't want them to be very reflective, but I wanted a bit of Fresnel in that side. So uh, that's about it for the support. Now the billboard base. Now this one has an interesting material applied to it. It has the, oops, looks like I uh, already closed that window, probably by mistake. Okay, so it has this material applied to it. And in order to uh, tile it properly, I had to make a new map for it. It's not very complicated. Again. Uh, just I just went to front and or actually no I went to perspective and since this is uh, somewhat rotated I tried to to be dead on on it I selected the the whole geometry and then the same technique project to view uh, project from view and then uh, as I was scaling this 
the edges started to be uh, not straight and I just selected the edges and used the uh, align tool on the left and I did the same thing for this ledge here that's used for the workers so it's basically the same uh, UV map it's just that it's on a different uh, a different layer and I had to create the same UV map with the same name uh, because they both use the same material so uh, that's a hint there for you so I did the same thing I went to top projected and then I scaled it to match my needs let me just select these all okay and the material settings are <coughs> excuse me are as follows so again nothing complicated it takes a lot of tweaking since this is a pretty dark scene and I didn't want anything to pop out more than it should so the billboard base is done now the billboard is basically the same material as the light base and supports just that the material settings uh, differ a little bit so we have uh, a bit more reflection, a bit more Fresnel, a bit more diffuse amount and that's it. Now the lights, the lights are very simple zero diffuse, zero specular, zero reflection they have just one luminous intensity of one with a slight bluish color. You can uh, if you're following along you can look at this number and uh, copy it into your scene and that's about it for the textures like I said nothing very complicated now in the render outputs let's check this out we have uh, illumination total so illumination total make sure you set uh, umpre multiply colors checked and the gamma to 2.2 uh, we have an alpha output for everything then we have the alpha for the add uh, make sure your alpha has uh, uh, clamp colors on and or actually it doesn't really matter since it's pure white anyway and dethering on well it depends so next I have the depth which is uh, this one has around 28 meters you can go higher or lower but I found that 28 meters works very good since I have almost everything every color in the grayscale here uh, next I have luminous shading which in the end I didn't use because it didn't give me the desired result so you can go ahead and not use it and then I have of course ambient occlusion which is pretty basic as well we have 128 rays with zero uh, meters <clears throat> okay so these are the render outputs now we need to talk about the lighting most important part now uh, what I did is I used quite a few lights here <coughs> excuse me but we're not actually using all of them but anyway let's start with the environment and we're gonna jump to the lights later so the environment is pretty simple I have an environment that's used for lighting so it's the the one for the lighting it uses the low res image version sorry uh, the low res version of the image and it's gamma corrected to 0.75 uh, this depends on the scene I wanted a pretty dark scene and uh, a gamma of 0.75 worked best and make sure that the projection type is spherical and the projection axis is Y and then you can play around with the rotation on the Y till you get the desired lighting result. Uh, next what I did is I duplicated my environment and I brought in the high-res version and I set it as spherical Y played around with the rotation till I was happy and let me just show you what I got uh, let me just hide everything so it renders faster so this is what I got from the um, environment that was used for the background now uh, a very important thing is that you need to uncheck visible twin direct rays reflection and refraction in the 
um, in the second environment. Of course, if you want, if you if you're doing say a, a car scene that you have a car with the render, you would of course probably want to use this one as it will probably match with the background. But I didn't. Uh, Sorry, I didn't make myself clear. You would probably want to use this one for the reflection and refraction and use this one just for the lighting. So all you have to do is disable this uh, and it will only use for lighting. Okay, but uh, in my case I just used it like this. Also I brought down my intensity of the environment to 0.8 <coughs> because it was a bit too bright and for this one also I used the gamma correction of 0.6 because uh, this worked best for my scene. If we use 0 uh, 0546 it looks a bit dark on the right side. So that's about it for the environment. Now for the spotlights. Now we're gonna use the spotlights okay so we're gonna use the spotlights just for uh, the volumetric light. So we're going to render a separate pass for the volume light. Now I created a spotlight and then I, I placed it uh, let me just hide this one. I placed it uh, right under my light as you can see. Okay and then I since volumetrics take a long time to render I disabled all my geometry Okay, and I'm just left with the volumetrics. I even disabled the background since I didn't really need to see it. Okay, and I then went and tweaked the settings. Now, again, these take time to tweak, and this is the reason that I didn't start everything from scratch. Uh, if I were to start everything from scratch, this uh, single tutorial alone would probably take around, uh, I don't know, two hours or something like that. So, uh, for the spotlights, uh, an intensity of 3 worked best for me, a uh, radius of 300. Now, this radius controls the softness of the edges, so be sure uh, you check that out. Uh, the samples control the, the quality of the softness, and the cone angle of the f and the soft edge, they could probably be a bit bigger if you want but I kinda left it like this because I wanted to uh, do it in post since I will have more control. Of course uh, you're happy to, I'm sorry, you're free to do as you wish. So let's say that we want to use a cone angle of 60. Okay, I used one of 45 but it doesn't matter. Now the soft edge again, this controls the, the soft edge of the cone angle but I'm gonna leave it at 5 and the volumetrics need to be turned on. I turned uh, the samples up to 128, height 7 and base 200 millimeters since I didn't want it to start right from here even if I modified it a bit in post. Now another thing we need to go over to the light material and change the density to 5 because the density it's, I think by default it's set to 20 and it's a bit too strong so I'm going to change it to 5. I'm not going to play with the color because I'm going to change it in, in Photoshop and the light attenuation and light shift needs to be to 0. I think that by default light attenuation is set to 10 percent but as you can see it uh, it kind of makes our uh, volumetrics less bright so I'm going to leave it at 0 and then I instance that spotlight over to the other light. And that's it for the spotlight. Now let me turn on my billboard. And now I'm using uh, photometric lights with, uh, with that file assigned. So all you have to do is go to item, create light, photometric light, and it will ask you for the file. So just load in the file and you will get this. Now I did the same thing. I went and I went and uh, placed them just in front of the light. Now I know that they are not very visible in in the render uh, as the the color uh, because we have this huge luminous uh, polygon here. But uh, we will use them in post because we have an illumination total output which you can see them very very clearly and they are also affecting the base so it's very important even if you can't see them now 
you will be able to see them in the final image. So just uh, by default, I think that when, when you import it, this comes in with a radiance of 1.2-ish. And I just went and, and put it to, <coughs> excuse me, to 2 because it was a bit too uh, low for my taste. Uh, we don't need to mess with the other uh, the other uh, settings, just the radiance, and I set the width and the height to to 200 millimeters, even if it doesn't really impact the scene. So that's about for the lighting. Now let's head over and render. Uh, make sure you have your frame width and height set to whatever you want. Uh, the settings, I'm not going to go over to uh, I'm not going to go over eight samples per pixel. I'm going to use Gaussian, but you can use Catmull, Rom, or Mitchell. I just use Gaussian because my overall scene won't be that sharp. So uh, you can use Gaussian and then use Unsharp Mask in Photoshop, but whatever. So I'm going to uh, leave it like that. Uh, Ray threshold are, is 0.1. So I'm not going to go over thing over everything. These are default settings, most of them, except for the radiance rays, which I raised to 5.2512 uh, 5 because I was getting some splotchy areas in my illumination total output. So that's about it. Now we are going to render this just like this. Make sure you have every element visible uh, except the spotlights. So we're going to render this just like that and after that we will render something else. We will render the lights on the top and the uh, volumetrics. So just uh, go ahead and press render. Now it's not going to take too much since we have uh, default settings but I'm, I will pause this until it's uh, it's done or actually yeah I will pause this and I'll be back when it's done okay so this this is done rendering so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna save layered image and I just made a folder outputs here I'm just gonna make a new one and I'm gonna call this uh, main and that's about it. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to render a separate pass just for the background. So make sure you go to the environment that holds the background and check visible camera and just render. It's going to render in a split second here. So save image and I'm also going to use this. I'm going to save it as PGA, so background. Uh, next what we have to do is render the volume lights but we're going to check off the background. We need a black background. So I'm just going to render this again. And we're going to save as a TGA. And the last thing that we need to do is render the lights. Now make sure you check off only the lights that are in the front because we're not interested in the ones that are in the back since they are uh, occluded by the billboard. So just these lights and we're just going to render like that. Excuse me, so we're going to save this as lights and that's it. Now we're going to head over to Photoshop. I'm going to keep my original uh, Photoshop file for um, for reference. So I'm going to go over to my outputs and I'm going to drag all of these into Photoshop. Okay, so we have the main PSD, which we're going to bring in the background. I'm going to put it on the bottom. Then I'm going to bring in the volume lights. Doesn't really matter what they are. And then we have the lights, which I'm going to bring in as well. So uh, we have now we have all our outputs set in here. We have the illumination, the ambient occlusion, depth, alpha, the add alpha, and that's it. So I'm going to unhide everything. One more thing we need to bring in, and that is the billboard add. I'm just gonna bring this in. Gonna 
rasterize the layer. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my alpha channel for everything. And I'm going to extract my funnel color output using a quick mask. And then I'm just going to create a new layer and merge them. So we have just uh, just this without the back uh, the black background. Now uh, we're also going to extract our illumination and I'm going to add a quick mask. I'm going to go over to illumination uh, to channels and paste that in. And now I'm going to do it like this. Uh, I'm going to merge the layers. So now we're starting with this. First thing that we're going to do, we're going to work on the background a little. So we're going to add a new layer and we're going to get a brush. Make sure it's uh, pretty soft. And I'm going to turn down the opacity to about 10%. And with the black color, I'm just going to paint over here since this is a bit too bright for my taste. Okay. Or actually, let me just because I uh, make sure you just uh, you you don't get seams like that visible. I don't know if you can see, but uh, you get a very obvious color difference. So I'm just gonna make my brush a bit bigger. I'm gonna whoops. I'm gonna make it even softer and I'll just paint over that side and one more time and that's it okay that's for the background now let me take a look here and see I did the same thing here but uh, another thing that we're gonna do now uh, before we do anything else we will correct this uh, billboard because I'm not liking how it looks so we're gonna get this billboard ad that we imported and we're just going to zoom in quite a bit or actually no uh, first we're gonna take the ambient occlusion and we're gonna set it to multiply okay this is much better so multiply and I'm gonna use probably 50 percent and now I'm gonna add a quick mask because I don't want my ambient my ambient occlusion to affect the lights so I want the lights to be bright as they are and I also don't want it to affect the light support because I want it to be lit a bit so just like that it's very slight different but it's definitely noticeable okay and now we're gonna correct this billboard so we're gonna scale this down to roughly 80 percent maybe more like 50 okay but another important thing that you need to notice uh, you need to take into account here uh, I'm gonna move it under the ambient occlusion so I can see the edges uh, is you don't if you uh, do this and you toggle the opacity set it to say 50 percent opacity to to see better after you dis after we distort it it's not gonna look uh, it's not gonna look good so make sure you don't play with the opacity so I'm gonna switch this to 50 percent and apply the transformation and actually no I need to go over to 100 percent scale it down go back to 200 percent and then right click and distort and I will move it into position so I'll just make sure that my the, the ads edges match the edges of the ambient occlusion and the billboard so you can take time to, to tweak this because the better the more time you take the better it will look probably hard to see on the video but this is looking great and right there 
and right there. And now we can click enter. And yeah, for some reason it got distorted very, very ugly. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to bring it in again. Rasterize layer. Going to distort it again. Okay, you can you can take your time to do this. I'll just be a bit sloppy. Okay, see it, it, it gets uh, distorted. It doesn't happen all the time. Let me just try to bring it in like this. And I'm gonna just click distort. Yes, for some reason it, it gets uh, distorted. Probably there's a bug or something in Photoshop. Let me try with perspective now. Distort. I really have no idea what this is. Uh, this is happening. If any of you guys have an idea, please feel free to comment and enlighten me. Uh, it actually it only happened like uh, I don't know two times while I was doing this. Let me just try like this. So I probably need to scale it and then distort it into position so you don't get that ugly look. So scale first, distort after. and I'm gonna call it done just like that and next what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this add alpha with my magic wand to just delete everything but the add so uh, I inverted the selection using control shift I and I'm deleting everything else now at the moment this is uh, too dark so I'm going to duplicate it right or you can uh, drag it here to perform a copy, control click, uh, I'm sorry, right click, duplicate, or control J to make it faster. And I'm going to set it to linear dodge add, and I'm going to change the, the opacity to uh, maybe 30%. Let me see how much did I set it here. It's, yeah, it's at 20%. Okay, so make sure you have the ambient occlusion above it so it helps set it into the image. Next we're going to use the illumination which we're going to set to color dodge. Now color dodge will bring in the light as you can see here. Now color dodge is very very good for uh, the illumination. As you can see I, I also used it here. Now we're going to zoom out a little and what we're going to do is we're going to add that l that small haze that you see around lights. So we're going to add this to a new layer. We're going to add a new layer. We're going to get a 60% soft brush uh, about that big. And I'm going to pick a blue color. Actually, I'm going to pick it right from here. and. Maybe this needs to be a bit bigger, actually a bit softer. Okay, so just click right there, and now you can 
probably blur this since I don't like the edges too much. Yeah, so I'm going to blur it about 4 pixels and then I'm going to set it, you can set it to add, but it doesn't really matter since it's a fairly dark image. And I'm going to set the opacity down to around 70 or so, whatever suits you. Okay, and next what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to duplicate, we're going to use this light layer that we did. And we're going to duplicate it around four times. Uh, the second copy, we're going to go to Filter Blur Gaussian Blur. And we're going to blur it. Actually, I need to unhide these to see. So we're going to blur it around three pixels. We're going to set it to Add. Okay. Next, we're going to get this. Uh, we're going to unhide the next layer. We're going to go to Filter Blur Motion Blur and make sure you have something like that. 30 pixels is OK. And the next one I'm going to motion blur it again. This time I'm going to use a more something, maybe something like that. OK. And I'm going to add this on top. I'm going to merge them. And then I'm going to add this one as well. Okay, and I'm going to delete the first one and I'm going to merge them. And now I'm going to set this one to either add, but it's a bit too bright as you can see, or, uh, sorry, not soft light, screen, I meant. Okay, or screen. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna leave. Uh, we're gonna go with linear dodge, except that we're gonna change the opacity way down to about 35 or so. Okay. Uh, let's see what we have next. Oh, the volume metrics. Now the volume lights. What we're gonna do with these is we're gonna first blur them. So we're gonna go to blur, Gaussian blur. Uh, maybe. Now, first of all, let's add them to our scene. So we're going to use linear dodge add. Okay, let's see what I used here. Yeah, with linear dodge add with a opacity of 60. Okay, and next I'm going to use a quick mask. And with a soft brush, again, I'm going to make sure the opacity is out. And make sure I'm going to paint out some of that uh, beginning there. Okay, and I'm gonna set my opacity back up. I'm gonna merge the layer and now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna set it again to add with 60% opacity and now I'm gonna blur it. So go to filter blur uh, whoops, gosh, blur. Okay, and Something like 12 should be fine. Yeah, so definitely around 12. I'm going to go with 12.5. Okay, and you can see it adds a bit of uh, lightness on the bottom of the, of the billboard and a bit of haze. Now you can probably tone the opacity down to around 50, but it depends on you. So that's it for the volume lights. Oh, and we can even color them if you, uh, if you want with hue saturation. Make sure you check colorize. And I'm going to give them a yellowish color. I'm just going to overdo it till I get my color off, uh, till I get my color right. And then I'm going to desaturate it a little bit. So saturation is going to be around 14 because I want a bit of, of, uh, of warmth on the bottom. So like that and the lightness can go a bit down to maybe point, minus 10. Okay? And that's it. Now we're going to do some overall color correction. In my scene I used a hue saturation and curves. So a uh, hue saturation I used it for just to, just to desaturate the 
image a bit and most of the color correction is done by the curves so I'm gonna add a hue saturation here and I'm going to desaturate my image just a bit so maybe around 10 13 something like that it adds a bit of more uh, a bit of uh, realism okay so something like that and next I'm gonna add a curves which I'm gonna add a bit of contrast first but just a bit Okay, and then I'm going to go over to the blue channel and I'm going to add a bit more blue. I'm going to overdo it just so you can see what happens. And I'm going to add a bit of blue here. And then I'm going to take some of the red out to give it a slight tint of green. Just a small tint of green. And you can see it, the difference. Okay. And the next thing that I did was I went and added, I, I corrected a bit the, the background, wasn't really happy with it. So I just darkened, uh, I just darkened it a bit, but not too much. Okay. And I brought the overall gamma up. And then I <clears throat> brought the, the highlights a bit down that bright spot over there and then I went in and took some of the red out again because I wanted a more dramatic look with that blue bluish green on the background so something like that I think I didn't overdo it like I uh, did now in my original uh, comp in my original image but I'm gonna do it now so I actually like this one better and hit OK and next what I did was added a bit of a uh, lens distortion along with some uh, depth of field and a, excuse me <clears throat> and a vignette so I sorry so I copied all the layers I just uh, duplicated them by dragging in here and then I merged them all okay and then I went and took my depth output I created a new a new layer here alpha 1 okay and then I went in and to filter uh, blur lens blur and the, I used exactly these settings so you can uh, set the focal distance by clicking here uh, you can probably go a bit higher with the radius depends on you and then I used noise with amount of one uh, distribution uniform and monochromatic clicked OK and you can see we get some uh, depth of field and then I used lens correction to add my vignette and my distortion so I used the distortion of minus three and then a vignette to maximum maybe that's a bit too intense so 0.25 click OK and voila that's it we're done with this image now if you want you could uh, I don't know do maybe more uh, work on this uh, like I said the more you the more uh, time you spend on a thing on a, on a, on a project uh, the better it looks of course there is a chance that uh, it may look worse than <laughs> uh, what you originally had so I'm gonna call it done uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you how my final looked. So this is how my final looked. It's uh, not very very different from what we had. Like I said, uh, like I'm sure I said in in some of my tutorials, no image is identical, even if it's done by the same guy. So thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next tutorials. And if you liked this one, please comment.